So I'm the director of the Biodiversity Institute in Oxford, a recently established institute. And one of the key um, objectives of the institute is to find pragma pragmatic solutions to biodiversity loss. And so I'm very interested in the whole concept of ecosystem service valuation, the idea of making a marketplace for biodiversity in order to trade the important ecosystem services that biodiversity contains. So my own research, I'm a, I'm a long-term ecologist. I look at longer ecological records, long-term ecological records, in order to look at variability, baselines, how ecosystems have responded to previous climate changes and also human impact, and therefore how that can use, we can use that in sort of infum, informing future scenarios. There is a clash in here, and one of the things I'll be saying today is if you look, for example, at some of the predictions for Africa, in, in uh, Western and Equatorial Africa, in fact, it's going to get warmer and wetter which for some ecosystem services is quite good news because that you will get a, a change from grasses to trees, predominantly a sort of forested environment. Yet that is the prime area for our biofuel production right now. So by what's happening is, of course, with, if we look at the short term, we think this is a great area, it's an open environment, a, a savanna landscape, we can plant our biofuels here. And in fact, our best carbon stocks may well be in those areas in the next 50 years. I think it is under-researched. I think partly the problem is that people see biodiversity as a free product. They, they think it's just it's good for its intrinsic value. They can go out and they want to see beautiful things. But it is so much more essential than that. In fact, there were some excellent examples yesterday by the ambassador of Norway about you know, the, the, the true cost of biodiversity in terms of the ecosystem services it provides. But we as academics need to take that on board as well. And we have to start to say, we have to start to balance up, be pragmatic about which areas can we afford to put over to one sort of ecosystem service, be it provisioning for food, versus another ecosystem service, which is carbon stocks. Which areas are we, are we prepared to pay for in order to maintain um, our future, actually? I think, I think businesses are starting to get it. In fact, there was a McKinsey report last year where they showed that 68% of businesses now see biodiversity change as important as climate change. So I think businesses are getting it mainly. Well, there's three things. They're seeing it in terms of reputational risk. If they damage biodiversity, I think the example from BP last year, oh, two years ago, very unfortunate, but it certainly showed that that was, you know, that, that, that is, it can have a huge reputational risk. But also the importance of biodiversity in terms of provisioning for new drugs. Many companies now see that, um, but there's plenty of other things, cottons, etc., etc. And the third one is many businesses now have to enter into the carbon trade. So if they want to buy carbon credits, there's got to be something for them to buy. And so therefore they have to, it's a pragmatic approach on all sides. I mean, I think the other thing to p point out is that only 12% of the world's surface is protected. So 88% is still out there and we have to find ways to get humans and biodiversity to coexist or uh, work alongside each other. First of all, we need to find, we certainly need to find better ways of, as I said, working outside protected areas. And there are some really, really good studies coming through to show that we are managers in, in terms of restoration ecology, in terms of restoring ecosystem function to large landscape scale projects. Uh, there was a fantastic one given yesterday in China. We can do it. Um, and we have to be really careful not to just be doom and gloom the whole time. Yes, things look pretty dire, but we also have to say there are ways of turning this round. So I see that as being very, very important right now. I think Norway are exemplary in the way that they have said, OK, we know that Red Plus is going to come online in a, in a couple of years, we all hope, but actually in a couple of years' time we might have lost vast tracts of rainforest. So we're going to step in now, we're going to lead by example. And if more governments did that, I think we, we would have, we'd be solving many more problems quicker. Um, so that's what I, I very much like. I like the way that it is, again, a pragmatic approach saying, look, if we cut this forest down, this is how much money we're going to learn, lose in terms of the economic benefits it provides. But also the, um, the, the governor of um, Acre State also gave really, really positive solutions to show what they've been doing in order to maintain and enhance biodiversity and ecosystem services it provides. For me, the practical upshot of this would be tools and technologies so an, a marketplace, to create a marketplace that really is transparent and works for biodiversity. So it's an ecosystem services marketplace that I, I would like to see coming through. And that requires the economists, the politicians, the policymakers and the scientists really to work together. Mm -hmm.